Good existence and welcome to the Community Supported Apothecary. I am JD, the spagyricist here, creating all of your lovely spagyrics. Now today I've got an exciting one on deck that I just finished up. I wanted to get in here and tell you a little bit about why it might be useful, beneficial for you, beneficial for you in your um, what do we call it? in your on your path of understanding, on your path of gaining knowledge and wisdom and experience. Now, if you're like most people, <clears throat> you don't know what it is exactly that our um, our sentiment is here, what our market is. Obviously, an apothecary holds botanical medicine. <clears throat> and there are so many botanicals out there in the world that we can't count them and we have not cataloged nearly all of them. And we're still really trying to figure out the, uh, the nature of nature, really. The nature of reality, the nature of ourselves, the nature of the interdependentness and the interconnectedness of the flora and the fauna in the kingdoms of the world that create the experience that we're having here. And in this inquiry into nature <clears throat> and herbalism, um, we find that the biodiversity, right, the, the mass um, applicability of the herbal kingdom is miraculous, really. It's beautiful. And um, what our uh, intentions or what we could do with these things really is limited only by the imagination. And I'd like to tell you exactly how that could be right now. So what exactly is the imagination? What is consciousness? Now, most of the world presumes that consciousness is an endogenous product of the physiology and the neurochemistry of the body, a physically bound, chemically oriented uh, uh, force in the, in the body that generates the uh, experience of I, that generates the consciousness, the self-awareness, the ego. Now, this is a false presumption. Science should not be doing this. This is, this is just a horrible way of looking at reality, honestly. It is a fundamentally flawed. And if you don't know why, then go watch my videos about uh, the history of the scientific worldview and an introduction to metaphysics. You'll understand that the height of the scientific realization is actually just the very, very precipice of the first step of spirituality, which is an exciting thing. And so what is that precipice? That precipice is the realization and the dawning, the revelation that in fact, the universe is basically just a mirror of yourself. It is a reflection of your mind and your larger subconscious mind, which definitely makes up more than your conscious mind. And so <clears throat> what we're trying to do here in the apothecary is reorient people's um, experience to suggest to them that in fact, that really consciousness is not endogenous. Consciousness is, uh, uh, of, we come from a more vitalist approach and vitalism states that the fundamental principle of life, the force of life, the essence of life that creates the consciousness, creates sentience, creates the I am and the ego and the experience, the experiencer, the observer, the thing that creates that is actually fundamentally distinct separate from physical and chemical interaction. So consciousness as a force is not a product of the physical world. Actually, it permeates all the physical world, <clears throat> um, sort of like light, I guess you could say. However, in our culture, in our growth, in our understanding, in our, cult in our, in our cultural uh, uh, sanctified um, presentation of what reality is, right? The Big Bang and evolution and the limits of understanding. They've come to tell us that <clears throat> actually no consciousness comes from the body, but well, what experiential evidence will tell you is that consciousness is a force in the universe and that it does not end at the limits of the physical body. The physical body is just like a transient container for it or even just more of like a uh, a useful uh, tool to use every now and then <laughs> and so what um, we 
we're doing here is <clears throat> uh, elucidating the connection between the the body bound awareness and the the cosmically apparent awareness the the universal awareness and the way we would do that really is through um through one irogenic medicine which repairs consciousness now i talk about this repairing of consciousness because your mind the consciousness in you that you have in you is individuated and it is separate from the what we were just referring to as the cosmic mind the out there mind, the out there consciousness, the force that exists in the universe, it's separate from it. And that would be uh, identifiable as your consciousness. And then the other is just the other consciousness that is existent and omnipresent in the universe. But <clears throat> we find that these consciousness are intimately and integrally related. And when you um, project your own awareness beyond the apparent bounds of your physical vessel, then you enter into a space where time is not really relevant, space is not really relevant, and uh, your thoughts will manifest as you think about them. How is this possible? Like a dream. When you go into a dream, usually it's like it just kind of happens to you and that in the dream you're not necessarily unaware of it but you're not conscious and you're not in control of what's happening to you in order to get back in control your consciousness must be basically kick-started or prodded while you're in the state of inanimacy that will allow you to become aware become lucid and start to control the environment that you're in, whether that be an environment of another entity's creation or if it's of your own subconscious creation. There are many different um, like fields that you can move through that are morphogenic and um, responsive to the self-organizing principle uh, or they are they are responsive to your uh, choice making faculties within your mind, and so it's not a physical thing. When you're in a dream, and then you get hit with a jolt of awareness, you become aware of what you can do. And most of the time, you know what can happen in a dream. You're not in your body. You don't even have a body. You're probably flying around. So. So one irogenic will do just that. It will kickstart your um, dormant mind while you're in a deep state of sleep to allow you to become aware of the environment. And it's this awareness in this non-corporeal um, state of consciousness that I believe will allow anybody, human beings, every individual ever to really begin to explore more of themselves and more of what their their true nature is actually capable of. And any, anybody that's ever become lucid in the dream before or who has experienced the dreamlike characteristics of this reality can tell you for sure that anything is possible. If only we spend as much time in ourselves as we did on our phones or on the internet, we'd find that we have the capacities that these very same things do directly within us, if only we could know thyself. And so that's exactly what this year Selene Capensis is about. Take it right before you sleep, five drops, six drops underneath the tongue, maybe up to three pipettes if you, if depending on your sensitivity, and a glass of wine, glass of water, doesn't matter drop it back and um, <clears throat> and pay attention because this whole process of spagyria is really about developing the continuity of consciousness and regaining, uh, re-realizing um, your own, really their, their superpowers. You know, you have the capacity to know truth. You have the capacity 
to no objective reality without having to be told or without even having to expect it with your fleshy form. You can just project your mind into it. So that's what we're trying to do here. If you want to see more, give me a call. Again, JD, the Spajira Assist here at the Community Supported Roth Carry. Nicholas Jensen Denton, have a beautiful existence.